Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about watercolor landscapes, but the technique I'm going to show you today can be applied to all your landscape sketches, whether it's with pencil, pastel or paint. We won't need perspective or anything like that. We're going to simplify as much as possible to make quick sketches easily. So the first thing to do when drawing a landscape is to decide where to place the horizon. There are many possible choices, but for this time I'm going to put it in the middle and it's a choice that is more convenient if you have elements to draw both above and below the horizon. Then we will place the important elements on our sketch and for each element I will ask myself one simple question. Is it taller or shorter than I am? For example, I am drawing a landscape of Mount Fuji, and obviously a mountain is taller than me. Everything that is taller than me, I place it above the horizon. So I'm going to draw Fuji and the mountains that surround it, and honestly I'm making this up. We don't need to be very precise. I just know that Fuji is huge, so the other mountains around in comparison will be smaller. And on the contrary, anything that is shorter than me, I place it below the horizon. That's why the lake is below the horizon and also the flowers, they're not very high, so it won't go higher than the horizon. In fact, in a landscape, we look far away, so we have to remember that the horizon is the eye level. The second thing to know is how to place the ground elements between the horizon and the bottom of the page. So the trick is to think that I, as an observer, have my feet in the bottom center of the page. The closer an element is to me, the closer it is to my feet and the closer it is to the bottom of the page. The further away it is, the closer it is to the horizon. That's why I put Mount Fuji directly on the horizon, because it's very, very far. And on the other hand, the flowers that are on the pass, they're very close to my feet, and so they are towards the bottom of the page. And the third rule is the great, the terrible, the dreaded perspective. And I'm not going to talk about perspective, in fact, because we're not in an architect's office, we are on vacation, on a hiking trail, sitting in the grass with a notebook resting on our knees, so we're just going to keep it very simple. The further away it is, the smaller it is. The closer it is, the bigger it is. And in fact, if you respect the first rule, which is to put what is taller or shorter than you above or below the horizon, it will always work, no matter what. For example, I added some branches in the corner, and since this tree is taller than me, it's above the horizon. And the boat further away, it's a small boat, and it's okay if its size is not really accurate according to the real perspective, it is below the horizon, so we understand very well that it's a small boat and it's not the Titanic, for example. And in fact, that's it! With these three rules, you can draw anything. Even if the proportions are not accurate, you will see that it will always work. In this painting, I intentionally put the horizon in the middle, but sometimes it's a better choice to put it much lower or, on the contrary, at the top of the page. So I invite you to the second part of this video where we will see how to choose the best placement of the horizon and what it changes in the final composition. I really hope that these little tips will inspire you to draw more during your vacations. In the meantime, I wish you a lot of creativity and I will see you very soon. Bye!